Hi guys, welcome to the second installment of the Theory of Strength Training series. Today we're going to continue our discussion from the previous episode and hopefully at this point you're starting to get used to my accent a little bit. As you might remember in the previous video we spoke about adaptation and now we're going to make a graphic representation of how things play out. Although this material might seem a little dry, we'll be getting back to this graph at least few times in the following episodes. So it's very important to have a clear understanding of what this intends to conceptualize and also have some of the terminology that goes along with the down path. So let's look at our graph. On the x-axis we have time, as simple as that. On the y-axis we have performance ability, which for the purposes of this discussion we're going to narrow down to how strong you are. And this is our starting point right here. So let's imagine that I went to the gym for the first time in my life and lifted 10 pound dumbbell 10 times. After lifting that weight, my performance ability will actually decline due to fatigue. You're not stronger at the end of your workout than you were in the beginning. But now, if I go home and rest and also supply myself with all the appropriate nutrients, the fatigue will start to dissipate and I will slowly recover back to where I started. But as you might remember from the previous episode, now that I introduce new stimulus to my body, it will try to adapt to it just in case it happens again. This area right here is called supercompensation. And this is what the training is all about. Hence the name of this episode. If I don't introduce new stimulus somewhere within this time frame, my body will no longer consider this adaptation useful and I will slowly regress back to where I started. Just look, your suntan would fade away if you stay away from the sun long enough. Let's now review some of the terminology we have here. First of all, this section right here is our training session. And as we said during training session, our performance actually declines due to fatigue. Everything after this point on the graph is rest. If I go home and rest, my performance ability will start to recover back to normal. Now, if my training session was challenging enough to evoke adaptation, I will now move into supercompensation phase, which in context of strength training would mean getting bigger and stronger. If the new stimulus is not introduced somewhere within this time frame, I will now start to lose some of my gains, which is referred to as detraining. So the most important thing this graph illustrates so far is that supercompensation does not take place until full recovery occurs. This graph is commonly being referred to as SRA curve. S stands for stimulus, R stands for recovery, and A stands for adaptation. In the context of continuous training, there are three possible scenarios of how the things play out. The best case scenario is if our following training session occurs right at the peak of the adaptation curve. This way, I fully maximize supercompensation from the previous session without losing any of my gains due to detraining. So let's see what the things would look like in that case. As you can see, if my timing was perfect, I would steadily improve my performance from session to session. Our second case scenario happens if I wait too long before going back to the gym. As you can see, since detraining is allowed to take place, every time I enter the gym, my performance level is at exactly the same place as it was when I was just getting started. So this goes for our weekend warriors. People that exercise only on the weekend because that's when they have the most free time. And the rationale is that something is better than nothing. Well, as you can see, that something is pretty close to nothing. The third case scenario is when we go back to the gym before full recovery takes place. As you can see, as fatigue accumulates, my performance level gradually declines. But there is more to it. 
Let's go back to our sunbathing analogy from the previous episode for a minute. Imagine that the beach season just started and you just can't wait to get that nice tan going for you. So you go to the sun for 20 minutes and instead of coming back next day, for example, you go back out in an hour. And you do that throughout the day. By the end of that day, most of us would have a sunburn. And equivalent of a sunburn in the context of training is overtraining. And don't think of overtraining as simply being very tired. If you keep hammering your muscles over and over and over again, our body's defense mechanism will eventually break down. And at that point, significant decline in performance is to be expected. Just like there are different degrees to sunburn, there are different levels to overtraining. Sometimes you might only need to stay away from the gym for a few weeks to get back on track. But in case of severe abuse, especially when combined with poor nutrition and chronic lack of sleep, you might need many months for full recovery to take place. Some of you might be thinking, then why not train different body parts on different days of the week and arrange these body parts in such a way that minimizes overlap? Now, what I mean by overlap is, in case you don't know, for example, biceps gets involved during most of the back exercises. So you wouldn't want to necessarily schedule those body parts on consecutive days. And that goes for many more different body parts, for example, like chest and triceps or chest and shoulders. And although train schedule like this would make sense to ensure the recovery of individual muscle groups, do understand that we also have to take into account the recovery of a body as a whole. For example, in this case, my central nervous system would take a beating six days in a row, which obviously makes training process more complicated than simply riding SRA curve roller coaster. And this is precisely why we still have eight episodes ahead of us, and we will be continuing this discussion in the next episode. But for now, this is probably a good time for us to stop, and I'll see you guys next time.